So inshallah we'll go and start. Uh, we'll be learning uh, uh, ayat number 74 to 78 of Surah An Naml. So inshallah we'll do a simple translation first and then we'll go into the details. Here in uh, ayat number 74, which basically these are the ayats where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly addressing the mankind. <coughs> so in the ayat Allah says, Wa in Rabbaka, and indeed surely your Lord, La Ya'alamu, surely he knows, Ma tukinnu suduruhum, what the hearts or the breasts are hiding, Wa ma yu'alinun, and what are they proclaiming or announcing and making it known. Which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the conditions of the hearts. Either you hide something in there or you proclaim and speak out. Then Allah says in the next ayat, وَمَا مِنْ غَائِبَةٍ And there is nothing that is hidden. فِي In the heaven, وَالْعَرُضِ And on the land. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ Except it is in a very clear record or a clear book. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayat talks something about the children of Israel by saying, Inna hadal Qur'ana, indeed this Qur'an, yaqussu narrates, mentions, ala bani israela to the bani israel mention something about them or addresses sometimes directly to bani israel but allah says what is that they do akthar allazi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions those things in which most of the things hum fihi yakhtalifun they disagree they dis differ with one another then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayat mentions the quality of the Qur'an. Innahu lahudan. Indeed, this is a sure guidance. Wa rahmatun and a mercy lil mu'minin for those who have believed. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that inna rabbaka, indeed your Lord. Yaqudi will judge Bainahum between them, between the people or between Bani Israel or right or wrong. Bihukmihi by his command, by his judgment. Wahuwal Azizul Alim, he is the one who is almighty, all knowing. So these are the simple meanings of these verses. So, inshallah, I want to point out a couple simple rules, revisit them, so it will be easy to understand some of these verses. Uh, we go back to the root that we learned is root letters fa and and lam, and the meaning is to do. If uh, I put a ta in the beginning and pronounce taf alu, Tafalu actually has two meanings. I want to emphasize on that. Tafalu, you just put a ta in the beginning and pronounce this way. And then we have to distinguish these two meanings based on the context of the ayat. So the first meaning is that you, second person singular, present tense or mudare, do or will do, or you are doing. The second meaning is she does, third person feminine. So both of these meanings are applicable, but we have to distinguish when we are translating the words that which meaning has to be used. So just keep in mind that taf alo has two meanings. Now, these are three letters, fa ala. If we go into the formation of the four letters by adding an alif in the beginning, and this becomes bab number four, you make a bigger word for four letters by adding an alif in there, it becomes af ala. Now, 
in those words that start with the alif and four letters we form these two things but there is a slight difference in that that you use the same harakat but on the ta you put a dhamma there and combine with a fa and kasra here and dhamma here tofailo so if it is three letters it is tafalo it is four letters it is tufailo the meaning will again be applicable to you do or she does second person and third person so in couple places in the ayats today this format is coming tufailo which means if you have four letters and you want to make the grammar of you do or she does then add a ta in the beginning and simply add a dhamma and a kasra under ain this letter so keep this format and then we will go and look into couple words that are beginning there one more thing i want to point out in the ayat number 2 is the, actually in ayat number 1 also the word ma ma comes with multiple meanings first simple meaning is that which you are pointing to something and you are talking about that which or whatever or what so there are multiple meanings but they point to the same thing if you have something you want to point that which or something that you have done that you which have done is ma but if ma comes with a word illa illa means but or except but then in this combination the ma is translated as not and we will see the format of both of these in these verses so keep in mind that if in the same sentence illa is coming then ma should be translated as not if there is no illa then ma will be translated simply as something that which okay so this rule is coming also in here so let's go back to the beginning <clears throat> the ayat starts with the word wa inna rabbaka here the rule is simple wow is a wow of joining so something from previous is being mentioned and the topic continues and inna translates as surely and it has the effect that actual word is rabbun rabbun means lord and you combine with the pronoun ka ka means you second person and this is lord and first thing you do you use the rule of idafa or mudaf mudaf ila which means you are combining two nouns or one noun and one pronoun together and relating them by the word of in english so it is lord of you or your lord by the combination rule what we do we change one dhamma here two page or two dhammas to one so the word becomes rabbo ka ka does not change pronouns don't change in in the terms rabbo ka but the word inna is before that inna means surely in that case okay inna has the effect of the noun after that and changes this last this letter last letter ba dhamma or a page to a fataha that's the quality of the inna so that is the combination wa inna rabbuk rabbaka or, or the word is rabbaka but inna will change also some people don't pay attention they try to stretch the word inna that changes the meaning so you make a short inna there Just pronounce the fataha. Don't stretch out. Other the me. Otherwise, the meaning will change. So in Narabaka, Allah says, indeed, surely, definitely, your Lord, and your Lord is pointing to the Lord of the human being. If you are reading, Allah talking about your you, or whoever is reading, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is talking about him. The next word after that is simple but again Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here something with the emphasis alama means to know when you put a ya in the beginning it comes to the grammar of third person present tense 
Ya'alamu. Ya'alamu means he knows. At this time, it's a third person, Ya'alamu. And then before that is a lam with the fata. This is called lame taqid. And that brings the emphasis in the word. Definitely he knows. But who is he? For he, we have to go back to the word Rabbun. So the, the full meaning will be, indeed, it is your Lord who knows for surely, definitely. What does he know? <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning, the first word as I explained that ma means whatever or that which. So here, this is whatever or that which or anything or everything you can translate multiple ways then the next word is start with these three letters kaf noon and noon these are three letters so they belong to the group of the word fala now we are going to apply this rule here we will add an alif in the beginning and it will become af ala so it will become alif, kaf, noon, and noon. This four letter means to hide something, to conceal something. Okay, so keep this word. Ak na na, you can pronounce it, we'll see how it works. But the meaning of this is to hide something, to conceal something. Okay, now this is the four letter. So we are going to apply this rule here. We are going to add a ta in the beginning, and this will bring the meaning she hides, and we will see what she is here. But first meaning will be, meaning may be both, he, you hide or she hides, but we are going to take the word she, because we will see how it works out. So we are going to apply the rule, you put a ta in the beginning, and these three letters will be kaf, noon and noon and you put the same harakat on ta you put a dhamma and sukoon and kasra and dhamma so first sound is to tuk nino but two noons together for will form a shadda so we are going to rewrite this thing as ta will be written as dhamma kaf will be written and we are going to combine the two noons with a shadda and this will be tokinno tokinno because we have to combine and sound of the kasra here will be with this kaf so tokinno means she hides for simple meaning first first meaning is she whoever she is or whatever that she is she hides or she is hiding. So that is the meaning, keep that meaning first in mind and we are going to see what that actually means. So here the meaning will be so far, definitely your Lord knows what she hides. Let's see what she is there. The word is swad, dal and ra, sadara. The noun is sadrun, and I want to explain what that is. Sadrun has multiple meanings. Um, if you remember, in some cities, the downtown area is called the sadr. <coughs> Why? Because it is the middle part of the city. Likewise, in the human body, the chest is called the sadr because that's the middle part of the body. It is translated multiple ways. It's translated as chest, sometimes as heart, sometimes as breast, but it is the center of the body which does multiple things. So that is the meaning of sadrun. First thing we are going to make is make a plural of that. Plural is sudurun. Sudurun means hearts or chests, sudurun. Okay, so that's the first word. It means hearts or chests, okay? Then you combine with the pronoun whom. Whom means they. They are people here, whoever they people are. 
So when you combine sudurun and hum, the meaning will be their hearts or their chests or their breasts. And by the rule of the combination, when you put an off in there, one dhamma goes here. So it becomes sudurohum, <coughs> that's the word in the Quran. <coughs> Sudurohum, their breast or their hearts or their chest or their minds, you can translate in multiple ways. Now combines with the word tokinno. So what will happen? She will go away from the tokinno and this word will take over. So the meaning will be their breasts or their hearts hide. Whatever their hide, their hearts, whatever is hidden their hearts, inside of them, Allah knows that, definitely knows because he is using the definite twice. Inna is surely, then Lam before Ya'alamu is surely again. So Allah definitely, definitely knows what their hearts are hiding inside of them. And I explain one more after that, but let me translate the second word after that. The second word is ma. Again, ma means whatever. Okay. And the next word is ayn, lam, and noon. These are the root letters. Three root letters, alana. We are going to do the same thing. Apply an alif in the beginning. It becomes four letters. Af ala. So it becomes a alana. A alana means to announce. And we know the word alan is the one which is made the announcement. If you have openly announced something, proclaim something, it is alan in Urdu. So alana means to announce, to proclaim, to, to express something. So that's the meaning of alana. So when we put a ya in the beginning, it becomes he and yo li no, he knows. And you put a buna, it becomes plural. They know. And the words, that's the word. Yo'linuna, they proclaim, they say out, for example. Wama yo'linun, and whatever they speak out, they proclaim, they announce. So what Allah is saying that? Your Lord definitely knows what these people are hiding in their hearts or they are speaking out, proclaiming openly. Now, this can be specific to the incident that when Prophet ﷺ is conveying the message, those hypocrites, munafiqeen, and those kuffar, they have a grudge about him. They have a hatred about Prophet ﷺ. They don't like, but they're hiding in their hearts, all those things. But sometimes they speak out, it comes out of their mouth. So Allah says, do whatever you want to do, oppose to oppose the Prophet. Allah definitely knows both ways, what you are hiding or what you are proclaiming or what you are saying. Nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then again, next ayat actually explains this further. Allah says, وَمَا مِنْ غَائِبَةٍ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Here again, the wow means and. And here the word ma. As I explained that, if ma comes in the, in the same ayat, you see the word illa. Fis sama'i wal arudi illa. So when the word illa is there, then ma will be translated as not. Not. Illa means except or but. Okay, so come, keep this combination. Here we have to translate ma as not. Okay, so the word is Wama min ghaibatin. So let's understand the word ghaibatin. These are common words. Ghae, gha, ya, and ba. Ghaib. Ghaib is something which is hidden from us, not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the general meaning of the ghaib. The noun is ghaib, we say in Urdu, but it is actually a feminine word. Ghaibatun. Ghae Batun is the full word with two pages when you make it first time. Ghae Batun, hidden, something which is absent from our knowledge is Ghae Batun. So this is the noun. Then you put Min before that. 
Min is a half a jar. Half a jar will look at the next noun and preposition changes to the mass to two kasra. So the word become ghaibatin. One more thing, when you have a uh, hamza here, hamza looks backward if there is an alif or wa or ya, it puts a mad on that. Okay, so it becomes ghaibatun. Okay, that's the word in the Quran. Allah says, Wama min ghaibatin, and there is nothing. Because you have to translate ma as not or nothing. There is nothing which is hide in the hiding or hidden from Allah. Fis samai, here the word I want to point out. The word is samaun. Samaun actually anything which is above the earth is called samaun. Okay. All the way to the sky or wherever you want to reach. Anything above the earth, which that's the reason it says when it rains from the uh, sky, it actually doesn't rain from the sky, but it rains from the cloud. Clouds are above the earth. Again, notice that this Hamza will push a mud on this. So you have to pronounce Sama Un, sky or anything above. Then you put Al before that. Al will add the word uh, Da in there. But Al will remove one Dhamma, and when you read together, mm -hmm. Al is not pronounced, Seen is pronounced twice. As-Sama'u, the heaven, anything above the earth you can call heaven. That is this As-Sama'u. Then you put Fi before that. Fi means in, which is a Harfajar. Harfajar will change this to a Kasra. So it becomes fis sama -i. Wama min ghaibatin, nothing is hidden from, again it says from whom, fis samai in the heaven, wal ardi, the word is al ardu, but fi will apply to that and it will make it ardi, same thing as samao became samai, and the earth, illa, illa means except or but, where it is everything Allah says, anything, everything which is hidden from the eyes of the people or mankind or other creations, it is not hidden, it is written, it is recorded somewhere. Allah says, fi kitabim mubin. The word kitabun is kataba means to write and the word is kitabun. But fi, is a harfajar. P means in and fi will change kitabun to kitabin. In a book, in a record, somewhere written down is a record. Everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded that is going to happen, that has happened, and it's in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is ghaib from us, but not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is emphasizing here is that the word is uh, mubin. Mubin is from bayan. Bayan means to make something very clear. So the mubin is the word, but full word is mubinun. Mubinun is the full, full word when we stop, we say mubin. But <coughs> when you make the noun first time, it has to the now. This word kitabun originally became kitabin because of fi. This word mubin is coming as a sifat, adjective of this one. The rule is that if there is a noun and there is an adjective defining that noun, which is kitab, then adjective or sifat has to follow the same rule and it becomes two kasra. So the final thing is fi kitabim. Again, one more rule is then in the tajweed when you have a ba here and you have a meem there, then you do not pronounce noon here, but you pronounce meem there. So it becomes fi kitabim mubinin. You stop and say mubin. 
in a very very clear record no confusion in that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded everything which is ghaib in a clear record or in a clear book then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayat mentions something about a people who are living in madina bani israel allah says inna hadal qur'ana here few things i want to point out Again, ayat starts with the word inna. Inna means surely, definitely. The inna, as I mentioned, has the characteristic that if there is a noun, for example, after that, take the noun Allahu. Inna, first of all, doesn't come alone. It comes with a noun or a pronoun. Meaning is surely. The first effect of the inna on a noun is that it looks at the last letter of the noun and changes dhamma to a fata. If it is a noun, if it is a pronoun, pronoun, let's say, hada is a pronoun, it means this. Okay. So inna is coming before that. It pronoun even if it changes but it doesn't reflect the change it remains hada so in hada indeed this now what is this allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the word i want to point out is something is that qaf ra and hamza okay these are the root letters and this means to read or to recite the word that we create a noun is this way you take the letter kaf with the dhamma and join with the ra these two letters and pronounce qur then you take the hamza and pronounce with the long alif a and do noon with the two dhammas okay qur a nun if you stop you pronounce or an almost all pakistanis indians pronounce this wrong they say quran 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 it is not quran quran we should learn to pronounce this word correctly quran okay al before that means da al quranu will remove one dhamma al quran the quran okay now important thing to point is that i just mentioned that hada means this okay and hada was actually as i said inna had changed this to a fataha now this hada is pointing to the book a book which is called al quran and this hada is being replaced by this whole word and it's going to follow the same rule that if this is a fatha this is a fatha and this rule is called the rule of badal badal means you take one word and change it with another word but it's going to follow the same rule that if it is in the nasab state it will be nasab state if two the maz it will carry to the maz if one fatha it will carry one fatha so hada as you can see from the sound has a fatha sound here so we have to change this al quranu to al qurana and when you read them together you read hadal you don't pronounce the salif in the middle hadal qurana in hadal qurana indeed this is the book what does this book do qaf swad swad are the root letters qasasa the word qissa is a narration is a story is from the root letters qasasa means to narrate something to mention something to state something okay so we are going to do the same thing qasasa means to narrate if you put a ya in the beginning yaf alo he does or it does so it becomes yak saso two swas will be written with a shadda so it becomes 
या कुसो साउंड ऑफ दिस विल बी या कुसो दिस और ऑन दिस दिस एक्चुअली हैज टू बी या कुसो दिस और ऑन नरेट्स मेंशंस स्टेट समथिंग व्हाट डज इट स्टेट अला बनी इस रॉइला अला मीन्स टू और अबाउट तो कुरान इज टॉकिंग अल कुरान इज टॉकिंग अबाउट बनी इसराइल अगेन आई वॉन्ट टू पॉइंट आउट इज दैट द वर्ल्ड इस रॉइल हैज ए हमजा सो वी शुड प्रोनाउन अलिव बिफोर दैट विद मद बनी इस रॉइला ओके अगेन द Again, this is just a common. So, uh, this Quran is talking about the children of Israel. Allah says, "Aksar al-Lazi, Aksar al-Ladi." Kasara are the root letters. Kasara means lot. Aksaro is the superlative degree. Akbaro, Aksaro. When you make that format of the words. it means superlative aks akbaro is the greater aksaro the most the many okay now this is coming as this is coming as a maful of yaqusso so this becomes aksara it changes meaning does not change <laughs> allazi means that or of that so bani israil allah subhanahu wa taala says in quran he mentions allah subhanahu wa taala mentions most of that their behavior their attitudes their disobedience allah says what is that hum fihi yakhtalifun hum is pointing to bani israil they fihi in it okay what are they doing khalaf are the root letters Khalafa means to come after. Three letters, Baab Faala. We are going to put a if Taala, which is two letters, add in there. Alif and a Ta. We are adding these two letters. So the word becomes if Taala. So if we add these two letters, Alif and Ta here, and Kha and Lam and Fa is there. This is common word everybody knows. Ikhtalafa. ikhtilafa means to do ikhtilaf to differ to disagree to dispute so that's the word ikhtilafa to disagree to dispute when we put a ya in the beginning it becomes third person and wuna makes it plural and alif is not pronounced so it becomes yakhtalifuna they are disagreeing they are disputing most of the things in which allah says they dispute among themselves and with others the bani israel allah subhanahu wa taala says in this quran we have explained those things and we have pointed out those things we have corrected those things this is what yaqusso is that this quran is talking about those things then the next ayat these are very simple words Allah says wa innahu lahudan wa rahmatul lil mu'minin wa inna inna means definitely and who is pointing to the Quran inna and who who when you write down with inna it's written the way it's in the Quran it is written this way innahu this who is pointing to al quran so allah subhanahu wa taala says wa innahu and indeed this this again note that inna brings the meaning of definitely surely but again lam before the next word is again a lam taqid la means again surely lam taqid translate as surely or definitely hudan hudan means guidance common word hidayat hudan guidance so indeed this is a definite guidance this quran is definite guidance not only guidance 
but Allah says rahmatun common word is a rahmat is a mercy for whom this one I want to explain this word is because again we make some mistakes in reading that amana are the root letters three letters amana to have peace make four letters by adding an alif then you add an alif here okay two alifs can be written as a hamza and it becomes amana <coughs> amana means to believe amana means to have peace amana means to believe a person who believes is can be made by adding a meme in the beginning so we are adding a meme in the beginning with the malaike muslimun so we are adding a meme in the beginning and combining with the hamza mo and these two words will make it minun mo minun or mo me nun okay what i want to point it out is that there is no wow anywhere here but we add a wow as a chair of hamza do not pronounce wow most of us this is momin momin it is not momin it is mu'min so wow is just written do not pronounce wow this wow here so it is mu give a little jerk mu minun mu minun means a believer okay now when you make a plural you add a wow and noon like muslimuna so the word becomes mu'minuna mu'minuna then you put an alif and lam before that <coughs> it becomes da al mu'minuna is the word that means the believers now we are going to add a lam before that lam means to is a jar and harf e jar when it looks at the noun after that if it's a plural then it changes wow to a ya and this wa dhamma is pronounced as a kasra so it becomes and this alif is not pronounced so it becomes lil mu minina lil mu minina don't pronounce wow here so that's what it is when you stop you don't pronounce the fata this quran is a definite guidance and a mercy for those who believe in it who are the believers okay it's a condition otherwise it's not a guidance it's not a mercy it's just a book of reading then allah says inna rabbaka these are the same words we are repeating as in the beginning indeed your lord now the next word is qaf dad and ya this means to judge qadi is a judge when you put a ya in the beginning yaf alo he does yak do and your ya and the mar mismatch so it is not pronounced yak di he judges indeed your lord judges or will judge mudar applies to both of them allah says indeed your lord will judge baina hum baina hum now hum can be baina means between baina between now hum can be applied to people who are differing with one another or people who are disobeying or or multiple people can be applied on this one but allah says between all these people allah subhanahu wa taala will bring his judgment how he will bring bi hukmihi hakama are the root letters and this has multiple meanings to command to be wise and the noun is hukmun hukmun is command or judgment or wisdom and put a how who in the end and this who means him and his him is pointing to allah subhanahu wa taala 
So when you combine these two, this becomes Huk Mohu. His command, Huk Mohu, but then we had a ba in the beginning with the Kasra, which means B by. And Harfajar B will change Hukmo to Hukmi. So it becomes Bi Hukmi Hu. Now Kari will say it's easy to pronounce and recite if I recite this Hu as He. There is no grammar there, it's just a recitation. Bi Hukmi He by His command, by His order, by His judgment, by His wisdom, He is going to make the judgment between the people. Why Allah says, Wahuwa al azizul alim. Wahuwa and he is. Al aziz and al alim are common words. Ali al aziz is the most powerful, the almighty. Al alim is the one who has all the ilm and all the knowledge. And these two sifat of Allah, Ismail Husna and sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are needed to do the judgment between the people because someone has to have the authority to do the judgment, which is Al-Aziz. And Alim means someone has to have the knowledge before he can make the judgment. So these two Asma'ul Husna are based on the context of the ayat which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning here. So these are the simple understandings of these verses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand the Quran read it properly, understand it properly, and act upon it. Sadaqallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amen. Just one minute. Oh, let me unmute the other people. Okay, yeah, now people can unmute. Okay, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, so first of all, we have quite a few people here. Do they have any questions or comments, uh, Tasadduk Sahib has some comment for, yes. In the very first line, the last word is Sama'e. Yes. And in the next line, her day. Yes. And then Kitabe. Why Sama, why it is not Sama'e and her day, like Kitabe? As Sama'e and Al Ardi, both are um, proper noun, da. Why not Sama'un and Ardu? No, no, the, his point is that why it is not Al-Kitab, right? No, I'm... al Sama and Al-Ard. Kitab has written Kitab Fee. Fee changed Kitabun to Kitabin. Okay. Fine. So this should be Sama'un and Ardu. Yes. Sama'un and Ardu. So al, when you put the Al, it becomes proper. Al Ardo, the proper earth, this earth, not any earth, other earth. And this heaven is the Sama. And Kitab is actually whatever the book is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining, it is a Mubin. It's a very clear book. There may be other books, but this was, this is a very clear book. Okay. Sayyid Sahib, you had something? Yeah, I may be having a senior moment. <clears throat> but I'm. Allah Bani Israela Aksar al Lazi. What is the meaning of most of? Most of the things. Yeah. Fihi in those they um, dispute. If it is things, then it would be Al Latif. So, so why Al Latif? Because it becomes feminine then. What becomes feminine? Once you go into multiple things, no, it's a singular. Well, this is what I'm Most of it. With. The moment we say that most of the, most of that which, and assume that that which is many things. Yeah. Okay. Then, the moment you go into many things, you would say al -lati. Am I correct, Nazi? Right. Okay. So, that is one thing I'm struggling with. The second thing I'm struggling with is what is the message that it is not addressing all of them, but most of them? It's 
No, it's addressing all the Bani Israel. No. And among the Bani Israel, no. they are disputing, disagreeing. No, is it? A, let us assume for a minute that it is saying most of the things that they differ in. So is, is it saying that it is addressing almost all but not all the things? Well, again, these are the interpretations. It is you know. the most of them. Yeah, yeah, most so most of the things. Some things Allah left Allah them. Relating yeah, something he corrected Israel, them. Most of which oh, so they deny or they do it. Inna, 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 but, inna, but what I'm saying is that with most of the things, then it could be <coughs> Allah fi hum. Okay. If you relate from the previous, inna haz Allah zi yakus. So inna, inna and uh, ismo inna haza and Cover of his yakusso. Yeah, his Quran is. I'm going for the meaning. I know oh, the okay. grammar. I'm, yeah. I'm giving the meaning. Allah Bani Israel related to Bani Israel, most of which they do ikhtilaf. So most yeah. of it. Allah is for the sake of are you saying that Allah is for people, <coughs> not for? I I'm not sure. Okay. What I'm okay. saying is, if okay. we first of all, there's two issues here. Is it, are we? Is the Quran saying that it explains about most of the things, but not all the things, right? Or most, most of the people, people, not all the people. That's one yes. thing. Yeah. But if it is saying most of the things, then instead of Allah Z, it would have been Allah Fi. No, no. If it was Allah, it will be that Fi He is again masculine. So everything is masculine here. If it's not Fi Ha, Fi He. No, no. I mean, again, no, again, let's, let's not argue about this that in I'm this class, is, you know. I, I can't. Okay. Do you have another question? Um, is it Allah Bani Israel uh, hmm. now? Allah is the particular right there. Yes. Why is there Bani Israel uh, Okay. So, Bani and Israelo, actual word is Israelo. So you combine Mudaf Mudaf, as Israelo actually. So you make Mudaf Mudaf first, so it become Bani Israelo. This is coming as a uh, maful of Yaqusso. So it changes Bani Israelo to Bani Israela. Yes. How uh, much have you had a question? Bani Israelo is Muda Muda Filai. Israelo is a diphthong. It does not take Kasra. Yeah. So that's why it is Bani Israela. This, is this is a foreign, yeah. Foreign word. It's a foreign word. And some foreign words like uh, Ibrahim, some uh, foreign words change only two states, not third. Even though it becomes Jar, but it represents with a Fatah. Yeah. Uh, Umar Sahib, you have a question? Uh, uh, because before, because Allah, he asked, Allah, he points to the people, and then Allah, he says, Bani Israel, Bani Israel. No, no, things which are be differing, things that differ with one another, like belief system or for this or that, not people. That material that, or these are the things, or their practices that they differ with one another, or their belief system, those are the things. Yopusso. All Bani Israel. Yokusso is the, Yokusso, <laughs> the is mentioned. Yokusso is the, uh, for Yokusso, they said he used Aksa Allah. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, just trying to understand when it says Allah means I have the interest of my Allah. Uh -huh. You know, uh, nothing is hidden in the skies and the earth. Illa fi kitab. So, except what is in, in the kitab, which is Lahai Mahfuz or something? Oh, no, Lahai Mahfuz is mentioned when the Quran, for, for in reference to the Al Quran, in the, in the uh, it's mentioned that he, it is written in uh, Lahai Mahfuz. But this may be a book with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the book of knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, it is not exactly said that it is written there. It says it is in that record. That record may be uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his knowledge. The record is in his knowledge. His knowledge himself, itself could be the record. So it means that everything is exposed to human beings by this life, except for what is in the... In the no, no, no. Well, whatever has been, whatever is not <coughs> exposed to us, is ghaib for us, which is lot. And Allah has the knowledge of that. So, but he says nothing is hidden. 
Yeah. Yeah. To, to, to human beings. Yes. Right? You know, right? Nothing is hidden from Allah. Right. You know, not from Allah. Everything. Right? Everything. Everything is in Kitab Mubi. As Brother mentioned, yeah. to human, to me, to you, to right. him, whatever is hidden for me is also hidden. It, exactly. In this yeah. Movie. yeah. So in other words, we can find everything right. what is in the heavens no. and the. Except right, uh, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that even it, a leaf from the tree doesn't fall, but it is in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, but here I think it's, I think it's pointing to human race. Well, but that nothing is hidden in the sky and the earth except <laughs> Allah knows everything, whatever it is. Yeah. Even in the yeah. human yeah. being, he knows, right? So it obviously means that human beings can find out everything. Whatever what we can the, find, yeah. Right? Exactly. No, it is saying that God knows everything. He knows everything, whatever is not known to us. But except, but say, why would Allah say, Allah fi kitab al Miss, it is, is, it is in a, but it is in a, in a clear book. It is, there is nothing hidden. Except what is in it. <coughs> well, it's the style of Arabic. So it, it is saying whatever is hidden is in kitab al -Mubi. Hidden from some from hidden us, from for us. example, hidden. from us. Well, yeah. hidden actually doesn't mean the real meaning of where it is absent. Okay, so this is really saying that nothing is absent to God. I I feel it's just the opposite. Really. Okay, well, but I think let's move on. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, you have any question? No, I think I got. Okay, uh, you had a question, uh, Ramat. Um, I want to say this. Uh, No, this is not talking about Al Quran. No. Okay. I want to see if any question on online there. Quite a few people. Afis, can I make a quick question? I'll try to be quick about uh, the question of Sage uh, Malik, uh, Sage Chaudhary Sahab. Sure. I, I, and I'm asking you to. I think it seems to me that this book may be the book which Karam and Kathabin are writing, the angels on our shoulders which uh, every human being has it and this book will be shown and it is very clear everything so that could be that book this kitab bin mubeen because uh, just like uh, kitab bin uh, afiz is in surah khaf and kitab e maknoon and loe mahfuz all these different uh, those books quran mentions but to me, it looks like the Mubin is about the Kram and Kathabi, you know, which every thing I'm speaking and is being written and recorded and which will be shown to us. So that is one comment. And the other comment, comment uh, which I wonder about uh, Malik Saab, question about Allazi and Allati. I'm not going to go more. First of all, there is nothing here which is feminine. This is Isme Masul. And it is a masculine word here, and uh, and this this means that if you go to Surah Maryam, that uh, Bani Israel in verse 20, you know, said that Mary was not chaste. So that is an allegation which Quran denies. And also in the same verse 34, if you go uh, or 30 that Quran says Jesus was said that I am a servant of God, uh, which is very different, uh, you know, than, than what, what other uh, Ahle Kitab believes. In, so what I'm trying to say is that, and also there were some food which were made haram and halal, which Quran changed it. So, so this ikhtilaf, which Ahle Kitab has, has been clarified by the Quran and it is and in that context when I read this verse uh, in Nahadul Qurana Yakusso ala Bani Israela so so that's what you know God says that on the day of judgment he will clarify I hope these two points I wanted to okay. bring it up Jazakallah anybody else has any question before we stop can somebody explain the Kitab al a little bit more, please? Thanks. It's a, a Kitab translated as a records or the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
the knowledge which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so comprehensive that those things which are absent from our observation, our knowledge, they are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And actually that uh, explains the first verse that whatever is hidden in the hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows all that. So his knowing, his knowledge, you can consider as a clear record that he has of everything with him. You can call it like a, a, a physical book or non-physical, but it is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the clear record. Abhi, sir, just quickly, I want to say about Kitab al-Mubin in Surah Yunus, quickly, in Surah Rakhsa. Yunus, verse 61, verse 61, over there, God says that he knows, Allah knows the smallest thing as a weight of an atom or a bigger. Asghara and Akbar in heaven and earth. This is about the azmat of God that his knowledge is so in detail that he knows everything in heavens and earth as small as an atom or uh, bigger than that. So Surah Yunus verse 61. So I think as Afisab you were saying uh, that he has this knowledge, this, this gives us the depth of God Ilam. and so that is why he says everything and then I combined it with Karam and Katabin you know okay. that book will be given to us so okay. this to me okay you know that's what I feel anybody else has any comment or question before we close uh, sir please assalamualaikum sir uh, I don't understand this children of Israel like uh, why children why not people like uh, if we are support like uh, Quran narrates to children? Like actually, children actually, innocent, actually, why see, not people? Yeah, it, you you can call them um, Yahudi or Jews, but the in the way this name propagated in the history was that the progeny of uh, Yaqub alayhi salam who migrated to Egypt and then came back to Palestine, those people are regarded as children of Yaqub because Israel is the name of Yaqub salam, And the other relatives are excluded from there. And, and I think that's one of the reasons is that uh, Suleiman salam is not direct progeny. So Jews don't regard them as the children of Israel, and they blame him for different reasons, different things. So, uh, okay, Bani you. Israel is the progeny of that Yaqub only. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Very good. Yeah, that is true, Hafisa, what you okay. said is true. Okay, so inshallah, we're going to stop it. Uh, Sheikh Nazir, can you please recite? Yeah. Can I just add one? one sure, one please thing? go ahead. You guys may take it or not. Israel, Isra means a messenger. Okay. Eid means Allah. The yes. messenger of Allah. Yes. Bani Israel are the people who got a messenger. Yes. Any person got a messenger <clears throat> is Bani Israel. Yeah. And this Quran is telling to anyone who got a messenger, which includes us. Nothing to do with Yaqub, nothing to do with Jewish. Okay. Now, Audhu Billah Minas Shaitan Rajeem. وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَيَعْلَمُ مَا تُكِنُّ صُدُورُهُمْ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ وَمَا مِنْ غَائِبَةٍ فِي السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مُبِينٍ إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَقُصُّ عَلَى بَنِي
ಅದು ಅಲ್ಲ ಇಲಾಹ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಜಾಕಲ್ಲ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಸ್ನಾಮ ಜಾಕಲ್ಲ